So now we're going to continue on in the next section. The Lord talks about forgiveness and it says in, in witnesses. So again, look at the sequences in the numbers go one and one. That's 11 Shemitah. OK, and then two and two and then three and two. There it is. It's the 22 and the 32. We've known this number very clearly. Go back to the calendar series. Go back to the uh, updated timeline series. And so then we know that we're talking about 7 plus 3 equals 10. That's in the Job 1 verses 2 and 3, which is 23 right there. As well as in the Daniel 7.20, when we talk about the 10 horns, 3 of which were taken out, so we're left with 7. So we have the 7 plus 3 equals 10 sequence in the 11th Shemitah cycle, and that will run inside this block of time, which is 22 to 2032. So in verse 20, the Lord says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. That's the two and three. That's 23 is saying where two or three, meaning in 23 is the gathering. Okay, And we talked about that in the window idea. And then that's when we introduced the idea of seven, when Peter says seven times, and the Lord says seven times, but 70 times seven. So it's really showing us here the sequence that it will start in 23, and we can again check Leviticus 23. And what? Verses 22 to 32. This is really incredible. This is where he talks about the Sabbath, the seven days. So we're right about this idea of 23, which is connected to seven. But it's seven and seven, which we know has to do with seven as the years of the wedding. That's Luke 2, 36. And then seven plus seven is 14, which when we add it to the 70, we get to the 84. That's Anna, which we know very well, 236. And Anna wraps it up with the breakdown of the timeline that we've been talking about so far. So what's even more incredible is that 84 actually matches, we're going to see that in a second, the story of the flood. Okay, we're going to get there in a second. The Luke 236, which lines up 2 and 3 for 23 again, gives us into the idea of the uh, the 12 hours in a day. Why? Because in Luke 17, 4, the Lord talks about seven times in a day, and that's connected to the forgiveness story that we just looked at in Matthew 18. That connects us into or in there 12 hours in a day. 12 hours in a day means that 12 hours times 60 for the minutes gives us 720. For the night is the same. So 720 for the day, 720 for the night equals 1440. And 1440 Greek stands for Abdul Mekonta, which means 70. So what we're basically saying is that all the way to 2032, starting from 1948, which we don't have in this chart, but in the timeline, we know it's 84 years. And that 84 years, the tribulation is finished and completed, which means that all is finished. Now, in Genesis, when we go back, okay, and we look at these chapters, we looked at Genesis 7:7, 7, 7, and this is when Noah went in. But, and so 7, 70, 77, we see right there. But we're told that he was 600 when the flood of waters was upon the earth. And that's in verse 6, so 7, 6, which means that he enters into the ark in verse 7, 7, 7, with his wife and all. Okay. And then it says, because of the waters of the flood, meaning the flood started. Now it says that there would be 40 days of water. How do we know this? Because in Genesis 7, 4, it says, the Lord says, for yet seven days. So that's before Noah turns, turns 600. And I will cause it to rain upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. So we know that once he enters, which is the day that he turns 600, there's 40 days and 40 nights. And that's clear. And in fact, it says in verse 10, and it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. So it's clear. The waters are upon the earth after the seven days when he turns 600. But then what happens? In verse 11, it says in the 600 year, 
So he's already turned 600 of Noah's life in the second month, okay? And the 17th day of the month, the same day where the fountains of the great deep broken up, which means there is a second set of waters coming in after the, the first 40 days. So it says that in, in verse 12, and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. So it's a second set of 40. But if you count the 17th day, and we're going to use a 28-day month, because I believe that that is the correct numbering, based on the Exodus 12-1 idea of the seven-day week, 28, four days rest to get to the 17th day of the second month, and then 40 days, totaling what? 84 days. And in 84 days, it says in verse 21, seven, Genesis 7:21, and all flesh died. That matches exactly the 84 years of the tribulation at the end of the 84 years, which will be in 2032, all flesh died, meaning there is nothing left to be done as regards to the wrath of God and the tribulation. So the final piece of the Matthew 18 goes through the story of the landlord or the, the king who forgives the debt to the first servant. Now that debt is 10,000 10, talents. That is an equivalent of a few million dollars or more. Something that obviously that servant was not capable of paying back. And so we realize that there is something more to that. Why? Because then that servant owe, is owed a hundred pence. And a hundred pence is of 10,000. What again? 1%. So we are seeing that there is a 1% idea that we're going to be unfolding right now. What the Lord is talking about with these last numbers, which is 10,000, 100, and then 1, is that 100 is 1% 1 of 10,000. And again, 1% is the last, or 1 is the last number that we read in the sequence. What I believe the Lord is saying is that the 99, which are going to be left behind for him to go get the 1, meaning that he's coming for 1% or a very small group compared to the whole. Now, I can't tell you for sure what 1% of what is. I don't know if it's a 1% of the world population, or I don't know if it's 1% of believers, or 1% of what. But what the Lord is saying is, all of his focus is going to be on that 1%, that one small group, the bride, those who have been following, those who have been listening, those who have been obeying his commands, those who have been giving their lives for him, that's who he's coming back for. As you can see, there's a lot of information here. And it's certainly a big warning that the Lord is revealing that the group that's going to be taken in the rapture is a very small percentage compared to a much larger number. Again, I'm not here to say that is 1% of this group or that group. But what we're seeing is that only a few people compared to the whole are actually listening to the warning and are completely turning away from the world, from sin and from disobedience, as you've heard in the message. And disobedience is many things and is for man to go to the Bible and find out what men are supposed to do. And it's for women to go to the Bible and find out what they're supposed to do. The Bible is the authority, not me, not a chart. Not even what I understand from the Holy Spirit, but the Bible. I recommend and invite you to stay in love for one another. Go to the Bible. Stay in prayer. Seek the Lord with all your heart. There is no time. And please, if you can, join the class if you're in this area. Because I really want to share as much as I can so that you can share it with others. May the Lord bless you and protect you. In Jesus' name, amen.